Only three ingredients are needed to make this extra cheesy mac and cheese. Noodles, cheese, and you'll never guess the third thing. This recipe makes for a cozy two servings of creamy mac and cheese, but so long as you get the proportions right, there is no limit to how much you can make at any one time. 170 grams, about two cups of dry noodles go straight into the pot, and the pot straight onto the stove. Then I pour in however much water this is, probably about two cups, my only measurable goal being to just barely cover the noodles. I like to add in a pinch of salt to flavor the macaroni as it cooks about 12 minutes or until, well, you'll see. Too often I find that online mac and cheese recipes overcomplicate the process. It really isn't difficult to make a solid bowl of feel-good comfort. What's more, because of the simplicity of this recipe, this is probably one of the more nutritionally balanced mac and cheese recipes out there, if that's even legal to say. Only one cheese is going into this pot today, mild cheddar. However, any soft, see, soft, melting cheese will do. I don't care for the drier or stringier cheeses in my mac as they don't live up to the pure, creamy pleasure, pause, that so dearly punctuates my childhood, bigger pause. All that I need to sufficiently cheese up my inner child, possible pause, is 70 grams of this golden block. About half a cup once barbarically picked apart or shred it if you care to have an easier time melting the cheese later. Just a quick check on the noodles to make sure they aren't sticking, and now the whole reason I felt compelled to make this video in the first place. In my last mac and cheese video, I used an emulsifying agent known as disodium phosphate contained within this evaporator milk. While there's nothing inherently wrong with it, there are some potentially negative side effects of using that artificial ingredient in excess. That wouldn't be a problem if I wasn't obsessed with mac and cheese. So what I decided to do instead is use a different, more natural emulsifier. One that um, might surprise you. Eggs. Well, technically egg yolks. You see, I had an epiphany some time ago that if egg yolk can be used to emulsify the cheese sauce in a classic Italian carbonara, why couldn't it do the same for mac and cheese? Well, it turns out it can. After about 100 bowls of mac and cheese later, I found out on my 30th or so that a ratio of one large egg yolk to 35 grams or a quarter cup of cheese is perfect. That amount of yolk to cheese allows for just enough emulsification of the sauce so there aren't any stringy bits of cheese. At this point, the pasta should be nearly finished cooking and I'll be able to tell if I could just try if, if i could try there we go yeah spot on but more importantly the water level is low enough that by now it's super starchy and thick creating the perfect base for this cheese sauce i cut the heat and look at that 12 minutes is up but wait this is still really hot and adding the yolk and cheese to this right now will cause the sauce to clump up a bit i usually just let it cool for about a minute is all might as well do something with the whites while i'm waiting Look, I, I thought it was funny, but yeah, it's just gonna have to be a part of my breakfast tomorrow. And now for the only marriage I will ever be excited to attend. Currently regretting not shredding the cheese now, but after a bit of persistence, the chunks of cheddar are melted enough to my liking. Full recipe and macros in the description below. Mm, it's super creamy. Like that box mac and cheese, cheese spread instead of like cheese powder. Tastes spot on like that. This is my favorite mac and cheese. Three ingredients, it takes about 12 minutes max. And probably the best thing about this stuff is that this has been sitting out for like 20 or 30 minutes now, and it's still so creamy. It's not even warm anymore. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I bet you'll love it. Daddy, chill.